what's really sad is one thing I noticed is that a lot of people are not interested uh, in prayer when you look at the videos, which is extremely sad. So the people, they're more interested about uh, yeah, conspiracies, Satan, Antichrist. That's pretty sad, guys. That's pretty sad. I mean, so look, don't get me wrong. I believe it is important to know about end times and our current events. We got to know, so we have to be aware of Satan's devices. But my, my goodness, if you're more knowledgeable about Satan's system than the Lord's system, then that's pretty sad. So prayer is one of the most important things ever in your life that, uh, that you can understand God's system more. So I hope that these prayer videos, that uh, they are written down, that you'll take special note and care about them and you'll apply them in your lives. Today we're going to be talking about what I believe is one of the most important subjects in prayer, and that is fasting. Fasting. All right, we're going to look at Exodus chapter 34, please. Why is fasting important? The reason why fasting is important is because it undoubtedly builds up something more spiritually within you. As a matter of fact, when you're paying attention to God more than food because the flesh, if there's one thing that it needs for survival and craves the most more than anything is actually food. And then when God sees you where you pay more attention to Him than to what your body, what your flesh wants, then you've got to understand that this is something that is that will fill within God's presence within you ten, tenfold, much more powerfully. So look at the book of Exodus chapter 34. Look what Moses did when he fasted. The Bible says at verse 28, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Wow, how about that? Because verse 32, And afterward all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had what? Spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. Verse 35, And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So look at this. So notice over here that there's a glow and presence within fasting. Moses, he didn't eat nor drink for 40 days and 40 nights, actually. Why did he do that? Well, by doing that, crucifying the flesh more and more, he paid more attention to God more. So the filling presence of God, now some people always want the Holy Spirit power, the filling power of the Holy Spirit, so you need to pray for it as if you desperately want it. But to combine with that, where you can be filled with God's presence, where people can actually see it, I mean, if you want something like that, then you need to fast. If you want people to know that God is with you, I mean, man, God is with that person. How? How? Because that person fasted and prayed. And then the people can tell that you've been with God. People can tell. Amen. You don't have to show it off. People can tell. But there's a danger now when you show it off. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew 7. Now the problem with independent fundamental Baptist pastors... And I can name some, but I'm not going to name some, but some people might guess if they know. There's a few of them who boast themselves to be prayer warriors, and they claim that they fasted for the entire month, or maybe even 40 days. And then I just keep hearing them talk about it constantly over and over again, like how great that uh, I did in praying and fasting. And rather than encouraging me, that made me more disgusted in saying, well, this guy thinks he's a very spiritual person. When, in my eyes, he's not a spiritual person. I see that more as pride, a person who wants to show off knowledge. I don't like that. I don't like that. And that's dangerous because that's what the Pharisees do when they fast. 
So notice what the Word of God warned about Matthew chapter 6, excuse me, Matthew chapter 6, and then we'll read verse 16. Moreover, when he fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, what? They have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So that's very important is that when you fast, the most dangerous thing you can ever do is to do it as a show off. Amen. You might say, why? Because then all your, uh, this is dangerous because all the prayers that you did with fasting will be in vain then. Right. You might say, why? Because you think that God will reward your prayer life when you fast and pray if it's shown off? God says, that's your reward. You know why people fast and pray? They want to show off to people. They want to show people that, hey, I fasted and prayed before. Or I fasted. That's dangerous. you got to watch out for that. So if that motivates you to fast by showing people how spiritual you are, if that's your motivation, then you better watch out for that. Then it won't count. That's dangerous. That's extremely dangerous that you want to watch out for. Okay, the other area that you want to know concerning about fasting and praying is Joel chapter 2, please. Joel chapter 2. Now, when, as I've taught you in, within a few lessons, the greater the number, the greater the numbers are in prayer, the greater the power in the answers to prayer. Again, the greater the numbers in prayer, the greater the power in prayer. So it's not just you. If you have more than one person times two to three to four, etc. If you have and assemble a group of people combined with you, fasting and praying, the Lord can answer more powerfully. You might say, why is that? Well, the reason why is this is because, well, it makes me bring up that some of those independent fundamental Baptist pastors, if they're so spiritual about fasting, why don't they assemble people to team up with them rather than this person showing off? Maybe that person didn't actually fast then and was trying to show off. I don't know. But the thing is, is that uh, I'm not trying to put these, uh, some of these people down. Some of them are actually more spiritual than I am. I can recognize that. But the problem with them is that with this uh, show-off attitude, if they really are that spiritual, makes me about fasting and prayer, makes me wonder why don't they assemble people together with that? Instead, they show that off to people to try to get them to fast and pray, but why not call out a whole meeting to do so? Why not call out a whole meeting to do so? There are actually some people, uh, which I give credence to those independent fundamental Baptist pastors, where they do have some who do it and team up together, which is awesome. Now that's an encouragement, and I want our church to do that one day. I mean, that, I mean, we got to assemble a team together where we can not just only just pray, but fast together. That would be an incredible blessing. You might say, why? Well, uh, think about it. If God sees one child um, praying to him without eating, but sees ten of his children doing that, that motivates the father more, that compels the father more to answer. By the way, it can also make him change his mind. Didn't you realize that? It'll make him change his mind and make him even answer your prayer. You want me to give you a greater one than that? Well, the thing is this. I mean, think about the protests. You ever seen protests? If, if it's one person protesting, they don't care. But if it's a whole team, it pressures the rulers to change and it compels them to change their minds. But it compels them even more when those protesters don't eat. They fast. How about that? Satan's people seem to do much better than God's people. Look at Joel chapter 2. Look at verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even unto me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And what? repenteth him of the evil who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him isn't that powerful why because at verse 15 blow the trumpet in zion sanctify a fast 
call a solemn assembly. See that? So notice that when the people are assembled, the church is a called out assembly. So this verse can definitely apply to you. So in Numbers, in Numbers, the fasting becomes so much more powerful that God can change his mind. If you want God to bless our blowout, perhaps there should be a fasting and prayer. And maybe you might change God's mind. Maybe God even made up his mind, no blowout. You ever thought about that? Maybe that's what God's been doing all this time. And what might change his mind is if you fast and pray. Ponder on that one for a while. Go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. The other reason why you want to pray is because you never know why there was that hindrance. And that's from the wicked one. So if there is a prayer request that has not been answered, then you know what you need to do? You need to fast and pray this time. Not just keep praying, but fast and pray. Because why? Because Satan could be blocking it. Even though you've been praying and God heard it, He's saying the reason why it hasn't been answered is because Satan has been hindering it. Now look at Daniel chapter 10, verse 2. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. See that? He was fasting. But look at what the angel said. You'll notice that he says at verse 11, And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. Look at verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. See, what that is, is it's chastening. So what this fasting does is that it chastens your flesh. The Bible says chastisement, it brings you more into holiness, actually. So that's another point over there. So I want you to compare that with Hebrews now, chapter 12. We're going to keep, we're going to go back. We're going to go back and forth here. But look at Hebrews chapter 12 now. The reason why is it makes you more holy. Holiness increases through fasting and prayer. Sure, it's a, the amount of sin that you eliminate can help you with your holiness, but it does not increase it. What will do it is through fasting and prayer. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. Notice what chastisement does in the Word of God. The Bible says, it reads the following over here. Verse 9, Furthermore, we have had our fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Verse 10, For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But He, God, for our what? Prophet, that we might be what? Partakers of His holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them, which are exercised thereby. Ah, look at that. So notice over here that the peaceable fruit of righteousness increases. So there's holiness that arises from that. And there's a peace that accompanies it, where you feel like that you've accomplished so much fruit. Why do you think Satan tries to imitate God's system with these Buddhist, Eastern mystics, and these religious people that combine their meditation prayer time with fasting? And then they claim that they achieve some sort of peace or enlightenment or betterment deep down inside. Because Satan knows that's what prayer can do and fasting does. So Satan, he gives him a false peace instead of God's peace. Go back to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. So knowing that fasting does the chastisement, and then according to Hebrews 12, it increases holiness and peace. We see at Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, continue reading. To chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, that's the devil, withstood me one and twenty days. 
But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So this is important to understand. Look at your prayer life. Why is God not answering the prayer? It's because the wicked one is getting involved. So it is so urgent to keep praying and combine that with fasting. You need to fast together because if you've been praying something for years and years and years and nothing has been answered, it's about time that you should fast. Now, there's this person that I know that uh, was like a, really a hopeless lost case. The person would not get saved. The person uh, was an intellectual graduate school. But then uh, what the minister did was that he combined it with, uh, I believe that he and some of the people combined with fasting this time in prayer. And guess what? The Lord finally answered the prayer and the person finally got saved. Why? Because it was combined with fasting. Some of you need to fast, not just pray. Speaking of that thought, now go to Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. Why do you need to fast and pray? The reason why is because of that, of that evil, demonic attacks. So some of you are going through demonic attacks, and Satan has been just giving you heyday, and you can't just pray. You got to this time, you got to combine it with fasting, because what's even more powerful than having... The sign, God giving you the sign to cast out the devil, you know what's even more powerful than that? People think the power is being that exorcist and then you get the devil out of the person. No, what's even more powerful than that is prayer and fasting. Because that exorcist, quote unquote, power can be even weaker compared to prayer and fasting. Didn't you know that? Look, the disciples couldn't cast out the devil. So what did Jesus say? Look at Mark chapter 9, verse 28. When he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? See that? Their exorcism, quote-unquote, failed. Verse 29, he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by what? Prayer and fasting. So that's important under, demo not, uh, bleh, under demonic attacks. You need to combine prayer and fasting. Now, the demons flee, flee at what substance? The blood of Christ, right? At the name of Jesus, right? But what, aren't those two things combined in your prayer lesson? The blood of Christ and His holy name? See that? This is a combination with fasting over here. Fasting goes hand in hand with prayer, undoubtedly. Go to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah. We're going to go to Zechariah chapter 8. Zechariah chapter 8. Now this is very, very important. Some of you are going to mess up your entire fasting and prayer if you don't. This one repented of you. Ready? Look at Zechariah chapter 8. Didn't you know that you can fast and pray, but the Lord will not answer it? You might say, Why? I prayed really hard. I fasted for a long time. You know why? God will ignore your fasting and prayer if there is one thing that you don't have over here and there's something that's preventing you, and that is you didn't get your unrepentant sins. The context over here shows that if there's a brother or sister in Christ that you're not getting along with, or there's that uh, bitterness or that holding back with, or if there's that sin or wickedness in your life, God says that uh, no matter how long you fast, He's not going to answer it. Why do you think what, uh, the lesson you've heard on the hindrance to prayer is, remember what? That division between you and your brother in Christ. Remember that one? Unf uh, not forgiving someone? This is extremely important. Okay. Let's look at the book of Zechariah chapter 8. Yep, I knew I messed up a word over here. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to the book of Zechariah chapter 8. Uh, Zechariah 7, excuse me. Let's start with Zechariah 7, then we'll go to 8 later. Zechariah 7, the Bible says, verse 5, Speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests, saying, When he fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even though seventy years, did he at all fast unto me, even to me? Now look at the context here, what's going on. And when he did eat and when he did drink, did not he eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? 
Keep reading verse 9. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassions every man to his brother. And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken and pull away the shoulder. Yeah, this seems no different from human nature today. That's your problem. So you got to realize this is that if that's your case, you need to repent of that. Otherwise, your fast is completely ignored by God. So to make fasting powerful, you have to repent of your sins. You have to plead the blood to forgive you of them. And you have to resolve it with your brethren and you have to resolve it in your life. Think about it. If you're increasing your spirituality with fasting, nothing will kill it more than uh, increasing your flesh. See that? So if you're fasting and at the same time you're sinning, you've killed it. You're starting from scratch. So that's the reason why it's so important that, look, what's the point of fasting and praying? To increase your spirituality. But that, that increased was ruined when it was, uh, when it was lowered again by your flesh. Now look at Zechariah chapter 8. Now this is important. You know why uh, a lot of the churches, now these people, they fast and pray longer than you do, but they're not for right doctrine. And then there are Bible believers who are all about right doctrine, but they don't have the right spirit. Now, when you have these two problems, and that's the motto of our blowout, is that when you worship God, in order to have a successful worship, like our blowout, they that worship God must worship Him in what? In spirit and in truth. You need to have, that's why we emphasize so much, you can't have a right Sunday service, a proper Sunday service without the right spirit and truth. So all the so 99% of the Christian churches you go to they're they're wasting their Sunday service. Mm -hmm. That will speak volumes yeah. because you can't worship God without spirit and truth. Right. So then when you go to Zechariah 8 it speaks the same way. Look at Zechariah chapter 8 and then notice what God says about fasting and prayer and then the context will follow along with uh, truth and peace. Let's see over here. Uh, verse 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, that the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Why? Why would God bless and honor their fast this time? Therefore, love the what? Love the truth and peace. Uh, that's the problem, all right? A bunch of Bible believers, you know, Always nitpicking and criticizing yours truly and other Bible-believing preachers. Da -da 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 -da, like that. And then the Lord can't bless their prayer life. Especially if they combine that with fasting, they're wasting their time. Mm -hmm. And then those, a bunch of charismatic churches, new evangelical churches, non-denominational churches, who don't believe in the, uh, in the importance of right doctrine, in love, they don't love truth. And so because of that, I mean, if they love right doctrine, they should love truth. But if they don't love right doctrine, then they don't care. They prefer a lie that they like. That's your preference, right? They will say about our church. It's not a matter of preference. It's a matter of the Bible. I'll tell you my preference. I want to get out of here, man. I want to quit the way that I teach and preach. I know how to build a church. I know how to get more people. But see, unlike these other, uh, uh, unlike these other sobs over here, th these problems, these wah-wahs over here, you know why I'm calling them out? Because the people I kick harder more than any other person is when you're given a task and a job to feed souls. When you're given a task and a job to feed souls, especially when people look up to you as God's man and a spiritual leader, and then you, and then you fail to get, do your job to feed them, you should be called out. That's why I emphasize this so strongly over here. That's why I stand for right doctrine so strongly because how many members have wasted their years and their lives attending church thinking they're doing God a service and they've wasted their lives and their time? Might as well go back to the world then. That's shocking right there. So you have to have truth and peace. That is so important. Attend a Bible-believing church and if some of you don't know where to find one, go to our website. 
Go to our website, www.realbiblebelievers.com, and our resources link will give you the church to go to. Worst case scenario, you can't find a church near you. You can go to kjvchurches.com and then try to find the best doctrinal church, though we can't guarantee all of them, the closest type. And then worst case scenario, there's no church nowhere near you from Adam, then just you'll have no choice but to watch us live. So this is so important where fasting can become extremely powerful in your life. How fasting becomes very powerful in your life is when you follow these patterns and you understand the importance of fasting. 